So this is going to be your first physics lab. And in this lab, what we're going to do is find the internal uh, diameter of a test tube. But we will do that in an indirect uh, manner. So we are not going to use any kind of uh, measuring device directly, but we will use an indirect method. So let's uh, dig in and see how that's done. The things that you're going to need for this lab are, of course, the test tube. So this is the test tube whose internal diameter we want to measure. We also have a graduated cylinder, and this graduated cylinder uh, has uh, 25 ml uh, water in it. And we're also going to need a ruler with a centimeter scale on it so that we can measure the height of water in the test tube. So these are the three things uh, that we will need for this lab. So what we will do is we start with 25 ml of water in this uh, graduated cylinder and we will pour out some of that water into the test tube. We will try to pour about 4 ml and we don't have to be really uh, strict on how much we pour out. But just about this much I think is good. So we started off with 25, 25 ml and now we have about 19.5 ml left. So that means we poured in about 5.5 ml. So on the lab report, we just write down that the volume of water we have in the test tube is 5.5 centimeter cube. And we also write that down in the first row of the table. So the volume is 5.5 centimeter cube. Next we measure the height of water in the test tube and the height of water is about 1.8 centimeter. So I would also write this in the table and also in that space before the table. Height of water is 1.8 centimeters. So I recorded my observations in that space before the table and then I also filled in the first row of the table. So next what we need to do is pour in a little bit more of the water. So we now know that there's 19.5 uh, ml of water or actually we started with 25 ml. So let's just uh, pour a little bit more. So the volume of water that we now have in the graduated cylinder is about 15 ml and what that means is that we have poured out 10 ml of the water into the test tube. So we write that in the table. Uh, we have poured out 10 ml and now we will measure the height of the water inside the test tube. So let's see if we can find the height of the water in the test tube. And the height of the water is about 3.7 centimeter. So write that down in your table, 3.7 centimeter. <clears throat> and now we're going to pour out a little bit more water. So the amount of water remaining in the graduated cylinder now is 11 ml and what that means is that we have put 14 ml or 14 centimeter cube in the test tube. So we now go and measure the height of the water in the test tube. And the height of water in the test tube now is about 4.4 centimeters. So write that down. 4 Point four centimeter and now we're going to pour a little bit more water and now what we have in the graduated cylinder is about 
nine centimeter cube of water, and that means that uh, 25 minus nine is 16 centimeter cube is in the test tube. And the height of the water in the test tube now is about 5.7 centimeter. So pour out just a little bit more of the water. And the volume of water which remains in the test tube now is 5 ml and what that means is that we poured out 20 ml. So we write that in the table and then we measure the height of the water in the test tube. And the height is about 7.1 centimeter. So write that down in the table. And now we can just pour out the rest of the water. And we know that the total water in the graduated cylinder was 25 centimeter cube. So the last line of the table would have 25 centimeter cube. And now we can measure the height of the water in the test tube. And the height is about 8.1 centimeter cube. Uh, 8.1 centimeter. So this is now what my table looks like. So I have put all the values for volume and the corresponding values for H in the table.
So we copied the graph in Google Sheets and now we are here in Google Docs and we wanna paste it. So Control plus V and then you always want to paste it unlinked. Uh, that way if you erase that sheet or you uh, uh, delete that document, then this document will not be affected. So just uh, go ahead and uh, hit paste unlinked. And now we have our graph inserted into our uh, Google document. So let's see what else do we need to do. So it says write the values of slope and y-intercept from your graph and include units with both. So let's first write the slope. Well, we can read the slope right here from the equation. Slope is equal to 2.98. This is coming right from the graph. So all we need to do is write down slope is equal to 2.98. And now for the unit, the unit on the y-axis is centimeter cube and the unit on the x-axis is centimeter. The unit of slope always is the unit on the y-axis divided by the unit on the x-axis. So this would be centimeter cube divided by centimeter. And uh, Google comes with an equation editor. So if you just uh, click on insert and then click on equation, this will activate this whole uh, suite of formulas. So from here, you can pick this uh, fraction and we wanna say centimeter cube. So uh, from here, if you click this X to the power B, then you have centimeter and then to the power three, and this is divided by uh, centimeter. So this would be equal to 2.98 centimeter square. So you can again insert another formula here. So equation. And then we wanna say centimeter, highlight centimeter, and then X to the power B. So we can write the slope. So the slope is 2.98 centimeter square. Now for the Y intercept, again, we can go and read the Y intercept uh, right off of the equation. So the Y intercept is negative 0 0.231. So let's uh, just write the value down, Y intercept is equal to negative 0 0.231. And now what is the unit of y-intercept? The unit of y-intercept is always the unit on the y-axis. So the unit on y-axis is centimeter cube. So right next to it, we wanna write centimeter cube. So insert equation, centimeter, and then highlight it and then x to the power b, and then in the exponent, we just write cube. So here's how we would write the equation, the values of the slope and y-intercept. Next is the volume of the water in the test tube is given by v is equal to pi r squared h, where r is the radius of the tube. Use your value of the slope to determine the radius r and hence the internal diameter d of the test tube. Now we plotted v on the y-axis, so you can replace this V by Y. We plotted the H on the X axis. So this H is like X and we know Y is equal to MX plus B. Whatever is multiplied with X is the slope. So that means that pi R squared is equal to the slope. So let's insert an equation and write that down. So pi is a Greek letter. So you will find pi right here and then we wanna say R, and then we wanna say uh, to the power two. So R squared is equal to the slope and the slope was 2.98. So now from here, we can actually solve this and get a value for R. So R would be 2.98 divided by pi, and then you can take the square root. So uh, you can just go ahead and say insert equation and then R is equal to and use a calculator to find the value for R. So R is equal to 0 0.97 centimeter. 
And since R is equal to 0 0.97 centimeter, we can now also calculate D. So D would be twice of R. Uh, just make sure that you keep the D as a lowercase d. So 0 0.97 times two would be equal to 1.94 centimeter is the uh, diameter of the test tube. Now, the next question is where you have to really think about it. So it says explain why one reason why your value of diameter is incorrect. So looking at the equation, V is equal to pi R squared H, that's the equation for the volume of a uh, cylinder. Now let's go back and take a good look at our test tube. Is our test tube really a cylinder? Well, most of it is cylinder, but the bottom is not flat. In a cylinder, the bottom is flat. So this is going to introduce an error, okay? So you need to explain that. Uh, when you write the answer here. So you could, for example, say the equation is for the volume of a cylinder, the test tube is not a cylinder because Its base is not flat. So when you have to uh, think of these uh, type of questions, you really want to uh, think hard and come up with uh, something which is related to what the experiment was about. And then is the equation the correct one to use? And uh, if there's anything that's deviating from the equation. So these are some of the things that you always want to uh, keep in mind. So that completes your lab one.